Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, Timo. How are you? Hello. Doing good. How are you doing? Fine. Let's say let's say we are fine. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds positive. <laughs> let's try. I created an agenda before, but I think I may have not saved it. Well, I can create it again. Can just leave them all there. Um, all right. Oops. Okay, I think we can get started. Let me save it now so we don't lose progress. Awesome. Okay. Welcome everyone to the Arizona JavaScript meeting of May 11th. Um, need to remember you to abide by the High Pledge Code of Conduct and the antitrust policy. Um, is anyone new here today that would like to introduce themselves? Or share what you're working on. All right, then we can get started right away. Um, so let me see. Uh, for the agenda for today, I had um, two items. One is the new wallet interface, um, which we had on like our wallet API redesign, which we had under your name. Ariel, I don't know if you have anything to prepare, but I mean, we can at least have a discussion on it maybe. Um, and the DITCOM V2 stuff, which an issue has been opened from uh, DSR um, and that they can continue the work and would like some input first. Um, any other topics we would like to discuss today? Yeah, hi guys. So I just wanted to check on uh, status of uh, in the shared components uh, libraries issues regarding iOS version. So I saw the PR and some discussion, but yeah, it's just interesting. What we do next? Yeah, good one. Uh, I think we can quickly discuss that. Okay. Um, then I think we can get started. Uh, I think we can pick this one up as part of the shared component stuff. Um, anything, any updates for Bifold uh, over the last few weeks? And anyone that attended the calls? Okay. Um, for the errors working group call, did anyone attend that? No, actually, I I joined later, but no one was there, so I don't know if it was very quick or or it was cancelled. I tried to join as well, and there was no one there, so I. Okay, so we are in the same page. <laughs> yeah. I believe that uh, Sam Curran had asked for somebody to take over the meeting and he didn't get any volunteers uh, uh, because he was unable to attend this past week. 
All right. Okay, cool. Um, and I did attend, I think, the last bifold meeting, but uh, most of the discussion was, I think, around, mostly around um, uh, integration of uh, AFJ 4.0 and shared components and stuff. So a bunch of the stuff that's on the, similarly on the agenda here. Uh, there was also a, a fair amount of discussion about um, the mediator changes in Akapai 8.0 and 8.1 and the performance improvements that are being seen and reliability improvements by using that mediator. Cool. Okay. And um, for the shared components and new updates, uh, like integrating the new version of AOJ, anything relevant that came out of it for us? Uh, like things. <laughs> we need to change or do or um i don't recall exactly and it, it, it's a little bit difficult for me because i'm not really involved in either of those activities in any meaningful way <laughs> so trying to you know understand exactly what they're talking about on that i'm probably not the best equipped to respond to that um however my feeling overall is that um all of the ARIES projects are in a pretty large state of flux at the moment, given all of the work to try and migrate to shared components. And that's not just AFJ and Bifold, but also Akapai and that it's taking a lot, um, th there's a lot more effort in getting it going than I think people expected, uh, but Reed, it's moving completely. along, but it's, it's, taking, it's taking a lot, so. Yeah, I don't know. Who, I think I think thing? Timo also agrees on that, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, but I think it it is taking a lot more time and effort than uh, initially thought, um, and like having it implemented, but then also starting to use it in production use cases uh, opens up a whole another like area of things that can go wrong. So um, yeah, I think also what? from our side more work than one other that. one other thing that's coming uh that you're probably in plugged into as well is that the uh it was fairly sudden that the ursa project is getting shut down um and so there's been some scrambling to try to identify the pieces of ursa that the various aries projects are dependent on and pull those out into their own libraries um so there's work going on there as well and that's going to kind of add to the this load because again it's all down in the native layers so yeah i think uh yeah we've uh like heard about the whole thing um so yeah interesting to see how that will develop it but i think to have like a good solution of where everything should go um and we can still use what we need from uh, the anocrats project Okay. That's it from me. Sounds like a good discussion at the Bifold call. Um, then on the shared components, um, I think latest update is um, migration script now fully works. Um, so basically everything is done code wise um, and it works for like zero for zero. And I think we're, yeah, as good as ready to go with that i think the only thing that was still left is the issue with the ios version um baron you took a look at that right yeah um i i i pushed a new version to npm which i think i'm fairly sure that's the correct fix to to make it work with lower versions um but i actually haven't tested it yet like from npm i tested it locally and it works with uh lower versions um but not yet from the version of npm but i can do it after this call um or it's is it this one? Oh no something went wrong i think with the uh python release and it might have stopped the npm release as well i would have to check uh double check it yeah or no, I think the yeah JavaScript did release. Yeah. Okay, then I'll check it after this call. Just Python, we have to fix something there because 
apparently we don't have the rights to push to uh, that uh, to anocrats on PyPy or something. Yeah. Okay. And so if this works, like this lower iOS compatibility stuff, we need to do this for also for Oscar and in the VDR, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, no, this is the whole fix. So it's not a lot. Um, no. Okay. Um, um, and I think another um, item is the, um, the version support with like cross building. Um, I think status of that variant is that we need to build like the custom cross images, right? That's the... For Android. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, I think we have the images or um, Plesio got us the values for the Android versions that we can use. And I probably should have done it a while ago, but I will make it into a Docker image. And then I think we said that you would find some place to, to dump it online so we can reuse it. Um, but yeah, once we have, well, we, we have the value. So the rest is like very simple. Um, just didn't have the time to do it yet. But I'll also put it on my list of things to do. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Because I think if we have the, the stuff for iOS and then also the older Android version support, then we can make like the first stable releases and, and merge the work in, uh, in Bifold and make the AFJ release. Yeah. Ooh. Cool. Finally. Yeah. Finally. Okay. Um, uh, does that answer your question, Alexander? Or yeah, thanks for the updates. Sure, sounds great. Okay, cool. Um, then let's do the Ditcom V2 stuff. Oh wait, no, Karim added something to the chat. Do we need to discuss the Ascar CI issue? Um, so Ascar CI issue is that the CI sometimes randomly fails. Um, um i think we got like back to a pretty stable ci but i think like this is the one that happens the most now um let me see is this the same issue or is this a different issue no it happened with the jwd or the open id uh, thing ah okay so we got not... the last one that fails um, uh, nope. Yeah, the scope check. Um, scope check? This one. Yeah, that's probably it. No. No, that was, that was uh, it was in the end it succeeded so i think we have to look at the old one um, I it oh yeah i reran it that's why so i think you can we see like previous um wow why is this so hard um <laughs> let me see it's merged and then we can probably see it um so on this we are canceled. Yeah, I reran the job. Maybe that is why it's not showing up. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, um there was an issue with the Oscar um uh yeah, because we can we see the ah yeah. There we go. Wow, that was so hard. Um, yeah, so this one, I think we've had it before. Um, yeah, it's on like error returned from database disk images malformed. And I also sometimes get like random other errors with SCAR when running the tests. Um, not really sure what it's about. Like what does database disk images malformed um, I had another one like that it couldn't find the, the config table or something, but it sounds like the database broken. Yeah. 
could it also again have to do with like like the wall files and that for example if we delete a um a if we delete a wallet um that it doesn't remove the wall file for example and that we then like create a new wallet and then it it does uh like apply the things from the wall file but it, it it's like it can't be applied anymore like could it be again something to do with that i I have no idea, but it does sound quite likely. I think it's a good, <laughs> a good uh, explanation of why this would happen. Um, I think what Kareem mentioned, the, the config thing is, I encountered that uh, a couple of times before. And for me, the reason was because I had a, in the SDK wallet that I tried to open with SCAR. Um, so with SCAR, if you open a wallet, it tries to look for a specific table, the config table. Um, and if you create the wallet with SCAR, then the config table should be there. And if you create it with Indy, then the table is not there. So if you get the error of like, it cannot find the config table, then for me, it was always the case that I created it with the Indy SDK um, or, or I created it with the Indy SDK and then moved to SCAR and then I didn't change the, the wallet ID or something. And then it tried to open an Indy wallet. Um, so if you encounter that one, that might be the reason, but it shouldn't be non-deterministic in the CI. That shouldn't happen in test though, right? Because you destroy the wallet after every test. Like I'm, I am using the Indie wallet, I think in those, well, this was somewhere else also. This was not even my test, I think. Um, but it shouldn't happen in test, right? Because like if the tests are well-written, the, the wallet is closed and destroyed afterwards. Well, maybe it has something to do with the, uh, uh, tests running in parallel uh, that the IDs are not unique or, so, or something like that. But I think Ario and I, we checked it once with to see if all the wallet IDs were unique. Um, but yeah, it might might have something to do with that. That's, yeah, I mean, that it is flaky. So it, it happens sometimes. So that would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. And then this might also be the, the same thing that what, what Timo said, that if you have some wallet and you don't remove the wall file, but you remove the wallet and then someone else creates a wallet with the same ID or something, then yeah, applying the wall file well, yeah, probably. The, the, there is a difference uh, in the in, in the way Ascar managed the, the wallet is that it doesn't delete the, 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 the directory of the wallet. So if, if a previous wallet was, uh, was created with the same name, even if you delete it. I mean, you you delete the file, the SQLite file. The the the, the directory will still be there. So maybe it it's attempting to open something that it's empty, and that's why it returns that uh, no no such table or mal malformed. Is there a reason for that? Doesn't sound like a feature. <laughs> I, I think it's because Ascar doesn't. Uh, I mean, Ascar only uh, handles the uh, files, but not directories. I don't know if you remember uh, Timo that I had to add. I had to add a create directory method to to the file system interface because of that. Because when I create a, a wallet. Uh, ask a return an error if the, the directory is not created for that wallet. So maybe it's something related to, to that. Yeah, yeah, I think it might all just come down to the cleanup that we have to do manually. So removing all the, the shim, the wall, the directories and all that stuff. And then that, that might be a good way, place to start. Uh, okay, so if anyone encounters this again or like wants to try and solve it, um, yeah, feel free to do so. It's probably a nasty issue to fix. Um, cool. Then let's move on to the DITCOM stuff. Um, do you want to give an, an overview, uh, Artem, on like 
what you want to do when you're planning your outstanding questions? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, uh, so several days ago, okay, this is ticket. <laughs> we uh, have an intention to continue this work uh, and to finalize the contribution of Gitcom V2. Uh, I already did some work regarding the updating the branch, and it was a big pain. There were tons of conflicts and difficult to solve. Uh, hope, hopefully, I managed to solve them, and now tests works on my branch. Uh, I mean, not Gitcom V2, but uh, the rest of the coverage, and I uh, pushed to my fork. I think I cannot uh, push to Sigpa anymore because we do not uh, work with them. I'm going to create a new uh, pull request uh, to the uh, DITCOM V2 branch uh, with solving uh, conflicts and updating. Uh, and uh, I spend uh, some time uh, looking how now uh, we can integrate DITCOM. And after the architecture changes, it fits uh, AFJ structure even worse uh, than before. Uh, now, when the wallet is independent uh, packages, uh, Sigpa Gitcom uh, approach does uh, in, in, inside much more uh, than V1. Uh, for instance, uh, now core package builds forwarding, uh, wallet does uh, JVA packing, uh, but Sigpa library does it all inside uh, and uh, it do not really fit uh, currently the approach. I don't see how it do uh, more or less well. Uh, in this ticket, I re reflected some of my uh, thoughts, uh, uh, ideas and questions. Uh, what can be there? The best uh, approach I see is uh, contributing uh, to SigPod.com library, in fact, uh, to make uh, the its API more granular, uh, expose methods, methods which uh, does just uh, JVA envelopes packing, uh, but not uh, wrapping assets now, just uh, base script. Uh, and uh, once uh, we have these methods, we can uh, update uh, wallet uh, plugins, uh, Ascar and uh, Indie SDK to call them. Uh, but I do not see a way how make uh, DITCOM package independent. I remember in autumn, uh, there was an idea to make uh, DITCOM uh, implementation pluggable uh, and uh, make it as an independent package. But if we want to make it independent at all, uh, we need to uh, an API to get uh, private keys anymore from the wallet. But it's uh, now it's totally bad. In previous, we had the wallet inside of the core and it was hidden under the public API but now it will be available uh, for users. So uh, we now, <laughs> we are uh, interested to get some uh, uh, design, finalized design to come up with an agreement how we should uh, proceed, uh, what components should be there, uh, what uh, package is responsible for, and uh, once we get it all, uh, finished uh, the design document, I'm going to update this ticket or maybe even create a separate document. We are going to do it to implement uh, and finish, ho hopefully finish the contribution. Okay, um, yeah, makes sense. Um... Yeah, and so your um, your preferred approach would be to implement it in the Oscar wallet directly um, and not support it comfy to um, um, like yeah, do not support it comfy to for the Indie SDK, right? Uh, yes, this is my initial thought. Just if we are going to implement in both wallets it means there will be duplication of the code if it's not an independent package 
and this is uh, why I suggested to exclude uh, in the wallet from it. Uh, and uh, uh, once I looked more, uh, Putin uh, did come uh, seek palaver inside of Ascar also caused some uh, difficulties, uh, issues with the uh, agent context uh, because it uh, seek requires DID resolver. But uh, Git resolvers right nowadays sit in the core and it requires agent context. But uh, in areas of SCAR wallet, we do not have context. So there was <laughs> issues with it as well. But uh, this path uh, is for me will be the simplest and the fastest. Uh, and uh, once we get it done, we can continue on uh, evolving it and making more uh, pluggable and generic. Yeah, okay. So I, I have a, a mostly a, a question regarding that because in your in your post, you, you mentioned that uh, the SIGPA libraries uh, uses uh, Aries Ascar, right? Uh, something that I, I, didn't, I didn't know before. Yes, they but use uh, Crypto from Ascar, but they do not use storage from there. Okay. But I'm wondering what would be the the added value of using the SIGPA libraries over directly uh, calling ASCAR like we are doing right now for DITCOM v1? Uh, a good question. <laughs> I also thought of it. Uh, just uh, uh, in the view which SIGPA uh, right now, uh, like it, uh, implement the crypto, implement the structure of J JWE, implements forwarding wrapping, uh, provides the general structure of DITCO message. In this view, there is value, and it also supports uh, different key algorithms, uh, not just X2519, but a uh, couple more types. Uh, of course, it's possible to implement everything uh, uh, in JS, uh, like in areas uh, in areas js uh, but yeah we will uh, exclude you and we can exclude sigma dependency i think um one of the things I, and and that's why i would lean also to do it using oscar i'm fine with doing it with the ditcom library we can also like migrate it later on but i think um we already have an implementation for like uh didcom and and like putting forward messages around it and we have separated that more from like the crypto layer um and i do think if we for example integrate the didcom library into the wallet it would would mean like the wallet is going to resolve um uh did and like we put all the layers we have in AFJ, we just like throw away because then on the lowest layer that doesn't have access to the agent context, um, mm -hmm. um, will like start resolving this. Um, and I think for like the, the other point on agenda today was the wallet interface. And I think I would like ideally, um, would want to remove the pack and unpack for Ditcom v1 from the wallet interface and make the wallet really focused on um, providing a generic crypto interface where you can sign and encrypt stuff, but it's not like it doesn't have a pack method that makes assumptions about how you want to do it, but it focuses more on like helping you encrypt stuff. And that's like we built a... Um, a JWE layer on top of it. Um, we've been working on adding like JW key support, uh, JWK support, JWA. Um, we have a JWS service. Um, I think I would rather move that up. So um, maybe we can look at a way where we like not add Ditcom to the wallet, but rather we remove all Ditcom logic from the wallet and just make it more encryption um, uh, focused, if that makes sense. Uh, for this, in this case, yeah, it will be much uh, easier to integrate 
SIGPAS library, but we will need a method to get private keys uh, from the wallet. And uh, we will need it in any case, not only in SIGPAS library approach, if we move back outside. I'm sorry, what, what did you say uh, at, at last, uh, like you need? Uh, we need a method to get private part of the key out of the wallet. Uh, if we move if we move back uh, methods somewhere somewhere else, that's yeah. going to be a problem with Indy, no? Does like does it make sense to have a unified? And no, this is going to be a lot of work. But does it still make sense to have a unified API for nice cat for um, uh, both Indy and Oscar since they are like they offer the fact that you can pull your private keys out. This that's a huge difference. I think if we keep the abstractions um, in place, it makes sense to have the same interface. But if we want to do like what we've already said now is like you move stuff to the wallet and nothing like a key doesn't leave the wallet. Um, and I think if we keep that model, then we could just build like a wallet interface that does the crypto and we build layers on top of that that use crypto for JSON web signatures, JSON web encryption for uh, uh, JWTs, for mm. Ditcom, for like everything. Like I think if we keep that model in place, the abstractions make sense. If we want to do it like in a different way, then probably the abstraction doesn't make sense anymore. Mm, yeah. No, I agree with keeping the keeping the keys in the at least in the wallet class. Uh, I think that is a, a general security <laughs> uh, design pattern that is uh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, because Artem, have you looked at like what would be um, um, like the effort in using the Ditcom library versus Oscar directly? Now that Oscar is also fully implemented, because I know we have like. Uh, in the, the Ditcom branch, there's like a class for representing a Ditcom v2 message. We have logic related to um, routing, Dit resolving, which we may need to tweak a bit for Ditcom v2, but I think we have a lot of that already in place. Um, so most of the work will go into like constructing the JWE, um, um, uh, uh, the JSON web encryption payloads, right? And, and, and signing those, because I know like there was like an initial implementation done in Ecopy based on Oscar. Do you think like we could um, uh, duplicate that? Because then if we come up with a more generalized wallet API, um, like we could have like Ditcom is something we built on top of um, um, uh, yeah, we it is something we built on top of the wallet API then, and we don't need to get the keys out because uh, the wallet handles the encryption and the signing. Yeah, it's doable, and uh, I, I'm happy with this approach. <laughs> I just uh, was worried uh, a little bit that we omit SIGPA at all, but they tried to <laughs> contribute it initially. <laughs> So yeah. a random thought here, but um, like for some implementations I've been working with over the last uh, last months um, with especially with external libraries, like, for instance, the open ID um, for VCI client, um, they you have to provide a, a, a signing callback. Right. And like we then we take uh, something that uses the wallet. Isn't that a uh, an approach? That because it really decouples the, the wallet from the other logic. Isn't that a, an approach we I mean it is it's not the most beautiful thing, but um it makes it really separate from um uh, from the actual crypto stuff. And that might be something to look at. That that's what the Veramo library does as well. It's got a, a KMS and there's different KMS types, and by default it's local, which is to use the local database to manage those private keys. But the idea is that you'd be able to replace that with one that, for instance, used the um, secure enclave or some, something else. And again, they use a, uh, a signing callback to, uh, to the KMS to, um, to handle the signing functions. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I think it's, it, it feels like a limitation of the, the Ditcom library that they 
require you to provide the secrets to the library instead of allowing you to uh, bring your own crypto. Um, yeah. Um, uh, Ariel, what do you think of like the, because you also wrote this of like where to put it and, and stuff? Yeah, actually, I, I, I shared that, that link because uh, you were most more or less uh, saying part of what is explained there, right? I mean, extracting the packing and unpacking to to a, to another class, I mean, mostly because of that. I, but but yeah, I I, I I totally agree that I will I will prefer to to have a separate layer for. For the for the envelopes, I mean for the JW envelope handling and and just using the the wallet as a as a crypto provider, let's say. Yeah, I think the specifically functions instead of classes or interfaces will probably I like I don't know how it would work right now and if it's even possible to use a secure enclave but I mean the good thing of of uh, having to provide functions instead of like a, a crypto provider interface is that it's it's much more generic right like you you have a certain a few input par uh, parameters and you 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 have an output um and that's it and and whatever you're using like you can use Ascar, you can use um um uh, indie but you can use whatever other stuff you want yeah it, it is possible currently to use a secure enclave because um you can just implement a wallet interface and if you implement your own wallet that talks to a different crypto interface um you can have a um um but yeah, you can you can use a secure enclave for example because yeah. you never take the keys out of the wallet no but isn't that like uh if if we're looking at the operations that are there maybe maybe i'm not understanding this uh fully so correct me if i'm wrong but if i'm looking like at, at the, the, the most the, the two most important operations are usually sign and verify right um they're quite simple like i don't know if 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 implementing an entire interface is a bit overkill i mean if they're just sign and verify if they, if they just have two functions fine um what do you mean I'm not sure understand. implementing an entire class like that, that, that's the thing i i did like about the spherion library the, for uh, open id for vci it's just i mean you just have to provide two callbacks um and you don't have to implement an interface you don't have to uh, um, yeah it's it feels a bit easier um then but, but it depends more, on the interface obviously yeah yeah i think yeah but i think it's really dependent whether that's like callback works for different use cases i think like having implementing a class with a single method sign for example or having a um a callback in the end um it comes down to the same you have like a custom implementation of the logic um right yeah you do um yeah you do but i think like for some operations you, like, i can imagine some there might be some things where you want to have an i don't know an additional uh like function or callback um like i don't know let's say verify revocation whatever like something something that is not needed everywhere but uh, in in some cases it, it in some cases it, it is like then are you then you would have to either extend that interface and add a new um a new thing there or you would have to well uh, add it to the original interface and throw a not implemented um um uh, exception i don't know it feels like it's a bit more flexible but uh, we shouldn't overthink this either. So I'm okay with everything. Yeah, I think I'm I'm fine with both. I think that's just an implementation detail, I think, in how you interact with it. Um, um, yeah, I think if you can 
make it generic enough. I think we should just look at like, all right, what is needed for a crypto interface um, for which we can probably look a lot at the the, uh, the Jose uh, um, suite um, in how they define all the different um, the different relations between encryption, signing, algorithms, um, these kind of things. Um, yeah, agreed. This is probably a case of you ain't gonna need it. Um, and, and I do think interfaces are more in line with the rest of the architecture. So maybe maybe you're right there. Yeah, I think, yeah, we could look at it. I think like we also had the idea of extracting like the wallet management from the wallet, uh, which I think will also help a lot um, because then you have like the, whole process of creating, closing, that kind of stuff separated from actually interacting with um, the wallet itself, which is often times different. What, what is the benefit of that? Because I mean, you would need to open it before you interact with it, right? Um, yeah, I think just sep better like separation of like what uh how it works like currently the api if you want to for example delete a wallet you can't really do that without creating an instance of the wallet but to do that you need to provide like you need to initialize it first so that you have to open a wallet just to delete it which you don't need to do to delete a wallet um and on an open wallet um you can call open again um, and the behavior is a bit funky then. So by separating the management, so if you call open, you get a wallet instance and you can't call open on that wallet instance again. You only can, can close it. Um, so I think it makes a bit more, it makes it easier to manage the life cycle of the wallet instances. But what if I really want to open the wallet? I would call it two times, right? <laughs> yeah. No, uh, makes sense. Thanks. But what what is like the good um uh, um thing to go from here like what do we see as requirements what do we see as recommendations what is um um yeah what do we think well i'd say providing the the key material to the library is is that's not a good design in my opinion so i'd say either an interface or 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 the callbacks but something like that um. yeah i think so the only way we could use the ditcom library is by integrating it into the wallet um because then the keys won't have to leave the wallet but they will leave like the oscar storage but that's all already the case now i think um um so that's option one um um another option would be then to um um allow like modify ditcom library to allow a callback for signing encrypting um uh, so we don't have to expose the private keys um outside of the wallet uh but the ditcom uh, layer can be built on top of the um, wallet and another option would be do not use um, um, a ditcom library um, implement crypto using oscar and ditcom logic in afj uh itself um based on correct if, if we're gonna do um option three where would the library live is that in, gonna be in core or as a separate package i think this is a bigger discussion uh which i think kareem can give a presentation on uh, next week um but yeah. like 
what's the like what is the future of this um like the structure of AFJ going to be and is gonna is Ditcom gonna be like a first class citizen compared to other um protocols or are we also just making it like another protocol in in the um in the bundle i think that's maybe something we have to figure out like currently when we have like the credentials module we assume it's credentials for ditcom um but maybe we should move away from that assumption or that that um yeah Good one. I was just thinking an hour ago, oh, Timo asked me to present something, but I don't remember what. Um, so thank you for the reminder. Yeah, uh, just a little background. The, like the, the, my thought process behind it is that Ditcom was externalized to uh, Diff, like it, it started in Aries and now it's, well, still heavily a part of Aries, but it's not like in the Aries uh, uh, Part of the Aries ecosystem, let's say. So I think we should really rethink of like what is going to be core, what's going to be outside. But yeah, yeah but, but but credentials, uh, issue credential and and, and proof, uh, proof protocols are did come dependent, right? They are did come even dependent. if they are from Aries. They then yeah, definitely, but they are also um, like they are the, the RFC is still in the Aries repository. The Aries RFCs, but it's also uh, uh, part of um, so it's a part of part of the diff uh, stuff. So I mean, the question I, I guess is, do we want Ditcom and all the Ditcom based protocols to be part of the core, or should that be an optional thing? And uh, let's say someone only wants to use uh, OpenID. Um, yeah, but I mean, this is a question for uh, for next week. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, parents and and so I think answer is not clear yet. I do think like the the current implementation had it in a separate package. I think that's always. I think it that's always good. Um, and we can always move around things. I think as long as it's like the implementation is kind of separated. Um, yeah. But we can continue on that next week. Um. So if we look at the different options, um, what option are we missing or are we leaning to a specific option of how we are going to do this? Um, I don't know if we're missing anything, but to repeat, I'm definitely leaning towards two. Okay. Um, which means um, we need to extend this. Um, we then still need to implement uh, crypto using Oscar um, because then we need to provide our own um, crypto logic. Um, yeah. Well, um, Artem, like in option two, how would that be feasible, like to do it like that or not? Because then I think a big part of the Ditcom library is the crypto, right? So if we don't use the crypto, um, would that be an option then? Or what do you think? Uh, I need to look uh, closely right now. I not sure <laughs> regarding uh, how feasible is it. Yeah, okay. And uh, regarding the accepting callbacks instead of imp interfaces implementation, uh, just uh, briefly looking, it seems to me there will not be dif much difference from the implementation problems which we have right now. If just we change this approach, uh, there will be st same uh, issues. And one more issue which I forgot to mention is that uh, using areas as car, we have we receive uh key 
uh, handle and we have uh, operation to free the memory to remove it. Uh, but uh, uh, with current uh, SIGPA interface, when we have SIG, uh, just secret resolver, it's not clear when the, to call a free function and it will be just leave in the memory of JavaScript until the garbage collector clean it. In, in DITCOM v1, uh, uh, in this decay, cares about it uh, and Rust clear it. And, uh, so this is one more issue with current uh, SIGPAS design. And uh, if we switch to using callbacks, uh, probably this issue will go away, but I'm not sure right now. Okay. Um, other people have opinions on like which of the options they prefer. Or... Well, uh, um, I will prefer I, I will prefer the, the, the option three actually, but uh, <laughs> I I have no problem if because I think it's it's simpler uh, for us to implement and it will uh, at least in the short term in the short term it, it will represent that we will not need to use uh, more native mo modules because if you are going to use ASCAR, we only we will only need to to rely on on, on ASCAR module instead of having two uh, i mean the ASCAR and the sigpa did, did come to to do the same thing but but i i, I understand that that approach will be more uh, or will we will allow to to modularize more or or, or make AFJ more independent on on the DITCOM support? Yeah, <clears throat> I think that is also <laughs> my point, um, and also I think my my preference is also slightly towards tree, but it's yeah, probably a lot more effort, and it also depends on if Sigpa wants to change their interfaces because I think they have like a good amount of FFI libraries based on that Rust implementation. And if we change it there with using sign callbacks and everything, then it will take quite a bit of effort for them to change it in all the FFI libraries and then all the libraries that use those FFI libraries. Um, so I can imagine that it's not their um, preferred choice to, to change like the core interface of their library. But yeah, we should probably ask. That's a good point. And I would also want to ask, like, we should not, I think native modules are nice for the things where it makes sense, right? Like crypto, it does make sense to to use um, uh, Rust for that, uh, but, or to have a single implementation. But for, this is more business logic on top, I guess. So a more flexible, I mean, when we implemented ourselves we are more flexible uh, always um and we're not dependent on, on on other communities or whatever so um yeah it is more work that's why i vouched for it too but you raise a very good point okay any other people have opinions on this like which of the options uh, they prefer or have arguments for or against? Um, not necessarily. Um, I I remembered that I still have some partially done DITCOM v2 implementation in TypeScript without any crypto dependencies, which we might be able to reuse partly uh, to move that into AFJ to make it work with option three. Um, but I have to dig through that code because it's been a it's been a while and it was almost finished, I believe, but not finished. Yeah, actually, we we have two options. Let's say we have your implementation, and also we we can use as a reference what they do on Akapai for using Ascar, which was what I I used as a base for. 
for doing the the implementation of Didcom v1 uh, with ASCAR. Actually, it wasn't so so hard to to translate uh, that code from Python to to JS. So we can. I mean, we do have uh, references to so, to work, to work with. with. I think there's the implementation. Yeah, that one. That one, yeah. Oh, shit. Ah, look. But that V2 follows their entire Ditcom V2 implementation? But no, just a, like it's just a crypto for Ditcom V2. So the packing and the encrypting and the, the, the key wrapping and stuff. Um, but it's quite, it's not too much. Um, no, that's nothing at all. <laughs> it's 300 lines. Wow. Yeah. And well, I think it's only yeah, 300. <laughs> and, and the same is for, for V1. If, if you look at, at our Ascar wallet code, the pack and unpack, you will see that uh, there is a. It's the same as. Uh, an inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, I think, so we have. Like I'm then thinking, like I think I'm also leaning to option three because I think like it will be hard to um, do like option two because we need people to change all those libraries, if variance phases, wrappers, um, and I think option three gives a bit more flexibility to swap out the implementations and just also be dependent on like um, um, have our custom Ditcom implementation. So then you only need to have like bring your crypto. Um, and I think with like, we could look at the Ditcom V2 implementation, I think from done using Oscar, um, we already have like a logic to create forward messages. We have logic to resolve did documents and, and, and extract services. Um, we have things to have like routing keys. Um, I know the PR that was started also had like a custom Ditcom V2 class and everything. So I'm then thinking like for option three, what are the big pieces that are missing that we haven't covered here yet? Um, do we know of any other just pure TypeScript libraries that do Ditcom? Um, maybe they provide some interface that we can more easily plug into maybe not maybe just for reference to uh, like the Akapai implementation um, but I don't know that many that are fully working and everything <laughs> yeah it's just always there's always crypto intertwined which makes it hard uh, uh... Okay, uh, I think we're at time. Um, Artem, um, I think, does this answer a lot of your questions? I think maybe something to look at is, all right, would it actually be feasible to do option two? And otherwise, like, look at, all right, what are we missing for option three, um, maybe? Okay, I'll look and I'll update uh, the issue. Uh... Okay, cool. Then I think we can pick this up again next week. And Kareem, if you can give the presentation on the uh, uh, like general structure thing, I think that would be a good discussion to have. And then we can also probably pick up the wallet discussion, uh, uh, which we didn't get to. Sure, it will be a three-part presentation. So we have to part, do it over three weeks. No joke, I'll do my best to keep it concise. Now I'm worried. <laughs> <laughs> you should be. <laughs> okay. Thanks, right. everyone. And um, see you next week. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. See you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Thank you. Bye.